Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Combos and Coffee with me, Pastor Mitch. And thank you, Pastor Shrill. I have my very own Bethel Creative Mug that I borrowed from down the hall. And uh, as you guys know, if you've been watching these, I'm not a big coffee drinker, but if you are, grab your cup. Yeah, you know, maybe you're in your PJs this morning because I know the pandemic is still going on. It's like day 780,000, it feels like. And uh, But today I want to talk about the story of Exodus. We've actually been walking through with our youth here, so our junior highs and our senior highs here at Bethel, uh, we've been walking through the series title Supernatural. And one of the key verses that I've been pulling from, well, I guess the key books that I've been pulling from is the book of Exodus. We've been walking through uh, Moses's life, what it was that he was going through, where it was that he was at, what was God, what God was doing in his life. And it's such an interesting story. So I encourage you uh, after this, why don't you grab your Bible and read through the book of Exodus. Exodus from beginning to end. We're going to be reading from chapter three today, but you can start at chapter one. I just think that there's so much in there, especially for us today, a message of hope, a message of God, uh, seeing his people, seeing you where you're at. Uh, there's a message in Moses where as Moses is is born, and, and if you know the story, he gets placed inside a basket, and, and he gets pushed down the water, and he ends up right in the path of Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter adopts him into the home, and so we see God's provision here. We see purpose already being manifested over Moses' life, and uh, as he's being raised by the Egyptians, He's learning about their traditions, uh, but his mom has actually been brought on by Pharaoh's daughter to take care for him, take care of him. And so he is also learning about his Israelite traditions and, and, and their histories. And so what we find is that Moses is, is, is in two worlds at once. He's living the lavish life in, in Pharaoh's palace and, and uh, amongst Pharaoh's people, but he's also watching as his people are enslaved. And one day he comes upon a slaver, uh, one of Pharaoh's men, uh, beating one of his uh, native Israelites. And, and Moses gets upset and ends up killing the slaver. And immediately, instead of reporting back or facing uh, the consequences, Moses runs away. And and in the very early stages of Exodus, you'll read that Moses finds a family, gets a wife, starts working for his father-in-law as a shepherd. And here in chapter 3, we come along Moses. And Moses has been, uh, by this point, well removed from his life as Pharaoh's adopted son and is now living with the sheep in the fields, uh, making sure that they're taken care of and watching out for them. And we see here that Moses, is, is as he's looking after the flock, may be wondering, you know, does God even still see me? Looking back on his life and seeing such purpose and seeing God's clear hand. And now it's almost as though the sin that he committed has led to him being forgotten. So in chapter three, verse one, it says this. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. We talked about that. Uh, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does the bush burn, but it does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. In verse 5, really, 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 really important here. In verse 5, God says, Do not come any closer, but take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. I love this story. Uh, I don't know if you can see yourself in this story, but there's many times where, uh, especially when I was being raised early on in Christianity, I thought that when we made mistakes and we, we messed up, that it meant that God kind of wrote us off. And when we came back to God, we kind of had to start all over again and refresh the part the process. And it was a lot of guilt. It was a lot of shame. Um, and it really was kind of opposite to what we learned in the Bible. Here in Moses, here in Moses's story, even in the Old Testament, we see that even though Moses had met up, had messed up, and there's no denying that God still had His eye on him. Because you know, in the story of David, what we'll see is that you know God doesn't look at the outside, but He sees the heart, and He knew Moses's heart, and that Moses's heart, uh, even though sin was a part of his life, and there was uh, there was forgiveness and repentance that needed to happen there, Moses' heart was after God, and it was for His people. And so here, Moses sees the burning 
burning bush and and all of a sudden as he looks at it, he says what's going on here he walks over and that's when god begins to speak i want to encourage you even during this pandemic and by the time this is live we may be in the red zone i want to encourage you and challenge you do you hear god calling your name and when you hear him, when you, you send to yourself, are you willing to go and listen to what he has to say? See, Moses sees this crazy phenomenon and it's in his engagement, it's in his pursuit of what it is that God is doing that God begins to speak his destiny and his purpose over him. Now, as Moses approaches the burning bush, God says, stop right there. This is holy ground. Uh, for everybody listening today, I really want to call you back uh, today to awe and wonder. Where we sit today, if you have your Bible with you, if you're centered into uh, meditation with God, if you're in your prayer closet, whatever the case may be, if it's just you and God, remember that is holy ground. You know, when Jesus died on the cross and he went up to heaven so that the Holy Spirit could come and be a part of us. Uh, when you read through this, you understand that wherever God is, that place is made holy. And so if the Holy Spirit is alive and well inside of you, wherever it is that you go, in your home, you know, in your workplace, in your car, you are carrying God's presence with you. Everywhere you step is holy ground. And uh, we need to be cognizant of that because I truly believe that it would change the way that we lived our lives if we recognize just how close our God is to us. So I'm going to leave you with that thought and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you guys on Monday again uh, for Convos and Coffee.